Last video, I went over a hypothesized theory on how personality traits evolve. Today, I want to explain from the perspective of someone who wants to start a business, why you should pay attention. Previously, we established that variation in a trait likely means that no one trait was completely successful in the environment of the organism. And this is because if it was, then everybody would have the same personality type. Because of the constant changing environment and the constant changing selection pressures, both in terms of survival and ability to reproduce, no one personality type is the answer. Instead, all of them have benefits and drawbacks. And depending on the environment, some are more successful than others. But in studying animals, we've been able to theorize which type of environments cause certain personality types to strive and others to fail. And this is where marketing comes in. Similar to how in the natural world, we observe birds high in openness in low opportunity environments taking to the skies in an exploratory manner to search for new opportunity, businesses can adopt campaigns that target exploratory individuals, those high in openness when seeking to expand their customer base. By applying well-crafted marketing campaigns tailored to attract a specific demographic of people possessing this desired trait, companies can unlock the door to higher returns and increased sales. Funny enough, some enterprises have already harnessed the power of targeted marketing through personality types, yielding impressive results, even though they don't fully understand the evolutionary basis for why it works. To gain a deeper understanding of the role of personality in marketing, we have to first assume the role of a consumer, something all of us already are in some way. As consumers, we often find ourselves standing at crossroads, facing the decision of selecting a specific product or brand amidst hundreds of alternatives, all vying for our attention. So what makes a consumer choose one brand over another? Is it just the quality of the product or is it the values of the company? If we take a deeper look, it's much more complex than you'd think. Consumers use many different things when choosing a product to buy. And when products are similar, it becomes harder to choose based on quality or features alone. So to make products stand out, marketers add non-physical attributes to promote them. As a result, consumers learn to evaluate products not only based on physical features, but also on the non-physical features. This is called segmentation. In marketing, it is used to differentiate the product based on various factors like origin, location, and so on. For example, economic segmentation results in different prices based on consumers' buying ability. But when markets are similar in physical or demographic characteristics, psychological segmentation is used to differentiate based on consumers' psychological attributes. It aims to make the product symbolize personal values and goals, creating an image or personality for the product. Traits like being sociable, modern, dynamic, conservative, or free are emphasized to build an association with the product. And it is these traits that consumers use to form product preferences, leading to consistent patterns in their purchasing behavior. So to see if personality factors affect buying decisions, and how it can be used to differentiate a product in an oversaturated market, researchers attempted to predict brand choices using differences in personality to see what brands would resonate with what personalities. Evans, in 1959, found that personality variables could predict 63% of brand choices, while other data improved his prediction to 70%. Steiner, in 1961, further improved the findings by linking personality differences to brand loyalty. Most notably, Koponen discovered that personality traits were better at distinguishing between product users and non-users than differentiating between brands among users. The evidence from these studies suggests the following points. Using regular personality tests doesn't strongly predict how people buy things. But when we create specific tests for buying behavior or have clear ideas about personality traits related to buying, the results improve. The connection between personality and buyer behavior changes depending on what we're studying, the brand choice or loyalty. So to test this out further, researcher Ruby Roy did an experiment using coffee. Coffee as a beverage has been around for a long time, but its consumption has very specific geographic and socioeconomic characteristics. And in recent years, a great deal of competition has flooded into the market using a mix of branding and packaging, along with a touch of values, to get consumers to buy their products. Of course, other versions of coffee have flooded the market as well, including instant coffee, which is what the study focused on. With the increase in brand choice and the question of brand preference being based on personality, marketers of the newer brands of instant coffee had to understand why consumers choose specific brands. As the hypothesis that brands were chosen because of better taste were proven false when blind taste tests were conducted. Ruby Roy had shown people could not tell the difference between brands when the packaging was removed and a blind taste test was done. But when the packaging and brand image was displayed, people had a distinct preference. This suggested that the brand image or personality played a significant role in shaping people's choices, which is obvious, but it begs the question, 
If it wasn't the taste that separated these coffees, what about the brand made people choose one over the other? So to figure this out, researchers started a study to see how people's personalities might affect their choice of instant coffee. They believe that certain personality traits could influence how people see and prefer a different coffee brand, which would in turn affect which brand they chose to use. The researchers expected that people who used a specific coffee brand would share similar personality traits, while those who used other brands would have different personality traits. In the study, there were four brands of instant coffee made by two big companies. Each company sold two brands. Brands A and B are similar to each other in terms of how the coffee is made and how they are marketed, but they are different from brands C and D. Brands A and B have one type of coffee, while C and D have a different type. So consumers can choose from four brands, which represent two types of coffee made by two different companies. Brands C and D are relatively new and more unique compared to the other two brands, making them more unconventional and new choices for instant coffee. 95 consumers were chosen for the study. To be a part of the study, households had to spend at least 500 per month on instant coffee. From this group, they selected consumers who regularly used one of the four instant coffee brands. They also checked if the consumers were aware of all the available brands before including them in the study. This was to ensure that any differences in brand choice were not due to differences in brand awareness. The final sample included 25 consumers for each of the three brands and 20 consumers for the fourth brand. The researchers then tested six personality traits of the respondents. The six traits measured were neurotic tendency, self-sufficiency, introversion versus extroversion, dominance versus submission, confidence, and sociability. Since this is quite an old personality model, we will only focus on the two that are still widely accepted today, extroversion and neuroticism. The main thing the researchers were interested in was whether people regularly used a specific brand of instant coffee. They relied on what the respondents considered regular use. Therefore, a consumer was considered a regular if they used one of the brands A, B, C, or D. They did not measure the intensity of use or the loyalty to the particular brand, but they assumed that regular use likely included some level of brand loyalty and high usage. When conducting the study, the researchers found when brands are positioned very similarly, meaning they are perceived as alike or comparable, the personality profiles of their users show no significant differences. In simpler terms, in the study there were no noticeable personality differences between users of brand A and B as well as users of brand C and D. However, when comparing users of brand A and B with users of brand C and D, personality traits like neurotic tendency and introversion extroversion showed significant differences. In other words, people who prefer brands A and B have different personality traits compared to those who chose brands C and D. And when analyzing all personality variables between the differences of the two clusters, A and B, which occupy a similar niche versus C and D, which occupy a different niche, they found that three hypothesized personality traits, introversion, the dominance, axis, and confidence, were significantly different between the users of the two clusters. Users of the C and D coffee brands had distinct personality traits related to introversion, dominance, and confidence compared to those who use A and B. The prediction that the unconventional brands C and D would attract more introverted, dominant, or confident individuals was supported for two traits, dominance and confidence, but not for introversion. It appeared that being less introverted, but more socially dominant and confident were key traits that influenced the acceptance of new products. The differences in personality traits can be best understood through the composite trait called confidence, which includes social dependence, emotional stability, introversion, and dominance. Users of the unconventional brands tended to have these traits, suggesting they are more supportive and relevant to unconventional behavior. The data from this study supports the idea that personality traits are relevant in explaining consumer behavior. There were two key takeaways, however. First off, the study showed that psychological segmentation as a marketing tool especially when more traditional ways of dividing markets have been exhausted, is a very good strategy, as marketers can create product personalities that appeal to specific types of consumers who also have those personalities. This is important when there are similar brands competing in the market. Each brand in a group may get a fair share of customers based off how similar they are, but the actual share they get depends on how well they market themselves on the axioms of personality compared to others. Secondly, when products are different, as in cluster one, the main determining factor of which one a customer will buy is dependent on the personality types. As Kopanin pointed out, personality traits were better at distinguishing between product users and non-users than between different brand users of the same product. In the future, this is something I will explore in more depth, but currently it sets the basis for the next video. We have explored the evolution of different personality types. We looked into the current research on how personality differences affect buying decision. And in the third and final piece of the series, we're going to figure out how to tie it all together. That is, 
how to craft a campaign that will target these specific personality traits or brands that align with them. It will involve understanding the evolutionary landscape these traits evolved in, and more importantly, how to create an environment that will attract these types of people, based on their personality traits would have favored these environments.